<laughs> it is a bit right there. What is going on, Wright State University? What's going on? Well, first of all, like, this was absolutely beautiful. We came to, I think it, it had to be the second one and the third one. One Cindy was here, mm -hmm. another Tommy was here, and this is an absolutely amazing spirit. Actually, my first real girlfriend. Mm. Stay the right state, so I kind of get sentimental when I come here. <laughs> Think about how That's we should have right. been something <laughs> exactly. special. Right. You know, when you meet somebody, you be like, "Man, we should be something special, right?" Mm -hmm. And like in your head, you want to be something special, but they 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 don't. Mm. So your heart breaks. You feel me? Mm -hmm. So that happened here. But anyway, my name is Ace Metaphor from a group called Metaphorically Speaking here in Dayton, Ohio, and I just love being a part of this arts thing. So anyway, I'm gonna do a poem. That's cool. Yep. Okay. Right. First rule is if I say that's cool, you 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 like cool. So if that's cool, you say cool, right? Cool. 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 All right, let's go. I wanna, I wanna hold your hand in the nursing home bed one day. When we have grown old and tired, because that type of thing will never get old to us. For our age, flesh will become sort of timeless when we touch and when we hug, and and when we stare at each other intensely through bottle thick glasses as we struggle to put our dentures in before we kissed and dip our callous fingertips in the busy tub of being gay before we rub cuz nothing will relieve muscle and joint pain caused by arthritis like massages by me. And my <laughs> old man's romance will be gently spooning you things like like already chewed food mm. or, or warm applesauce sprinkled with your favorite heart medication cuz no matter <laughs> what the nurses say <laughs> Feeding you things will always be my job. Just like it's my job to bed bath you every day, so tell the age she can she can take the night off. Cause tonight, tonight is gonna be a lot of it's gonna be a lot of bumping and slapping, mm. cussing, then gumming, bones cracking, hits dislocated, getting your spanking shaking, you throwing it back at me, me using my favorite cane for bracing hearts, bracing. <laughs> Lungs, a butyrol inhaling, geriatric bed breaking, car like yanking, sex making, then embracing each other's souls. When we are done, as our tongue, stories of our lives together in your soul for so long, you actually come to memories mm. from so long ago. Those nights, baby, mm. even all times wouldn't make you forget my name. Mm. Then we lay with your salt and pepper, salt and pepper flavored head cradled on my chest, growing a smile that only a woman that has been licked right. Oh. By a faithful mouth. Oh. All her life it has. As, <laughs> as you gently feel me creep my hand so deep, 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 down in your depends. Yeah. <laughs> oh, <he's nasty. laughs> because even at 90, I promise to still be giving you booty rubs until you fall asleep. Proof oh that there's just some things. Age will never change. It's like with some guys, shivery. We'll never die how I love. Mm. We're somehow supposed to last past this night's time, and at night's times you would wipe your eyes before looking at mine. It must up the last bit of same thoughts you have left to say, you better not die on me. Mm. Cause that'd be rude. <laughs> <laughs> and probably make me cry. Mm -hmm. You remind me that a gentleman never makes a lady cry. Fighting back tears, I look at you and I reply that the only reason I wake up every morning is to not let you down. As long as you're still alive, I'll be around. Hold your hand in the nursing home bed one day. We have grown old and wrinkled to prove that when I said in sickness and in health, that meant whether you were walking or willing. Talking or having trouble remembering kisses or children, your name or mine through too much benign or religion, I still love you. The same, I still hug you. The same, I still make love to you. The Probably a little bit better. <laughs> Certain things get better with time, but no matter how old <laughs> or how sick we get, you will always be my boo. You will always be my babe. You will forever be my old ass Beyonce. <laughs> so when I say that I want to make love to you tonight, that means well past our years. 
into old age, into eternity. That's that beat. I am a registered nurse by trade, so that's what I do. The, the moment, how powerful is this? How powerful is it when you stand in front of a person, right? And maybe they don't say these exact words, but they say, you know what? I promise to love you, no matter what. I promise to accept your past, your present, and who you are going to become now, 10 years from now, 20 years from now, 40 years from now, 50 years from now. They say that to you, right? And they keep that promise. And you are, you, are, you are holding hands with that person. It doesn't matter whether it's in your bedroom, a nursing home bedroom, a hospital bedroom. It doesn't matter. You are holding hands with that same person that made that promise. That's a powerful moment there. And that's what that piece is about. It's basically talking about that, yeah, I want you to love me right now. But anybody can love me now. Promise to stay loving me, no matter how difficult it is. No matter what ailments we may face as people, continue to love me. All right? Love me until you take your last breath or I take mine. And if it ain't about that, I'll love it. You know what I mean? Come on. Come on. So I'm going to get into it. I'm going to get into another piece. Is that cool? Yeah. Cool. 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 We loved in fist of anger. Knuckle punched holes into walls to Master Dark One slowly growing in our hearts. We, we only talk because our lips dripped of venom. And long ago, we threw the antidote away when we said I did. I always wonder why our families were black to the wedding. Maybe they knew that this, this wasn't the best day of our lives. No, this was the funeral. They gathered to watch us box ourselves in this body-shaped hole under the altar as we exchanged rings. We covered ourselves with soy. I think we thought love would grow. Rage. Rage could only fertilize skin. They sprouted after every Sunday service. One said, I love you. Most said, fuck you. Others, I hate you. These stone cold messages filled the land of our text threads. So much. They resembled overcapacitated cemeteries, our bedrooms. We filled with flowers after every argument, but our romance smelled less like ecstasy and more like a decorated graveyard. We are mere broken mirrors of ourselves. You cut me every time I try to reach for your heart. But when you do, I don't get it. So when the moonlight shines through, we emerge a zombie. Honestly, walking through this relationship with hungry, we eat each other's sanity for breakfast. You haven't brought new clothes since we were resurrected when we cuddled. You say you can't hear my heartbeat. That's because you're no longer there. Mm. I haven't touched you in ages. I imagine you have cobwebs growing down there. <laughs> Your favorite toy you named Charlotte. <laughs> think about it. Just think about it. Our yard. Y'all got it right. Yeah. Our yard is <laughs> eerie mist <coughs> with trees whose fingers dance on the neighbor's kid's walls, coupled with our screams. He ain't slept in ages. And I can't feel anything anymore to say that I am unhealthy is an understatement. So I just want to know. Is this what happens till, to, till death? The worst part when two people have already died inside of a relationship. Because I, I just want to love more than life itself again, but how can I? I'm married to you. When I'm with you, I feel as if. So listen, this 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 one particular poet, he cool or whatever. You know, we've been cool for a while. <laughs> we actually started this metaphorically speaking thing. It got to be about four years ago, man. And it's been an excellent ride. One of my my mentors, big brother, um, he's old enough to be everybody's big brother. Hey. Okay. <laughs> so, and he has a man bun. So <laughs> let, me, let me tell you, number one poet rule. If, if somebody has a man bun, they got hot fire. You feel me? Oh, <laughs> so so I'm going to bring my man, Jay Martinez, hey, up here. Hey. He's going to do two pieces. And I need y'all to give him as much love as you gave me. Okay, is that cool?
So I went to Wilberforce University and received the education that was collegiate. Mm-hmm. On top of receiving knowledge from what the street give. Now it's Big Mama Soul Food Sunday oven hot when it's heat hit. Self-educated, so I got a strong mind. That's why I be spitting these strong rhymes. Baby, I ain't no professional. I've just been doing this shit for a long time. Mm-hmm. And yeah, I went to college. I was applying them highlighters. I'm reading the books that my mom was. I was puffing that reefer to have my eyes tighter. A humble warrior with the hands of a prize fighter. I'm from North New Jersey, the land of the high rises. Where you leave a crack and you want with the live wires. Everybody's getting their hustle on competing to see who lines wider. With that chalk around their bodies, where that line's brighter. See, I escaped this. My mental the weaponry, and I would never blind fire. That's why I get rhyme hyper and a rhyme cypher. But it feels like I'm being attacked by nine vipers and blind snipers. So walk eight miles towards the future like Makai Pfeiffer so that I can get further in my direction. I can see the evils coming but cannot be smarter than the deception. Hatred tries to penetrate but my heart is the protection. And if it is a divine design, I only pray that I'm a part of the selection. Because when they kind of fade in destiny, I don't really know where to take it in. They say hell is what you go through and heaven is what you make it. But with that said, I am non-denominational, but I'm far from an atheist. I'm just smart enough to know why you should choose wisdom as opposed to try to make it rich because I'm from the hood. And it feel like it ain't no hope in the slums. Most walking around broken or fun. Stressed out so you have to be smoking a blunt. Skyscrapers so high, ain't no soak in the sun. Guns is like trees, they both burn and open a lung. I am a spiritual man, but I've never spoken to tongues. But how can they be But how can they be preaching in church when they sectarian bias and defeating their purpose? A lot of that shit be making my people feel like they're weak and they're worthless. Where's the empowerment so we can start reaching the surface? You know why be peeping a serpent, never sleep when I'm working. It's funny how we get knocked in the streets as a merchant when it's the government that be sneaking the work in. And then we steadily creeping and lurking. And I ain't talking about no Arab or a seek with a turban. Food for thought, this is the beef that I'm serving. I get on a heavy mission when I'm seeking and searching for the knowledge to gain. So we can really survive in this game. As well as they come and tell my style of a man, for as long as I can flow. I will always acknowledge this pain, and I ain't going nowhere, I show no fear, I'm gonna be right here getting knowledge of my mental to I'm ahead of my time but just a few light years, so I can spit poems to fuck up the equilibrium between your left and your right ear, cause a child from the ghetto with an education makes me America's worst nightmare. Woo! Let's go! Let's go! This is my, my piece, yeah. <laughs> so, um, of course, you know I'm from the hood. North New Jersey, a lot of projects, high rise buildings, a lot of crime, a lot of negativity. I was an, al- an anomaly, positive, trying to gravitate to better things, but it wasn't nowhere near my, my grasp. So now, you know, Spoken with Poetry has been my outlet. And we have um, been an LLC company for a year, finalizing a nonprofit for a major youth program on a Midwest national level. Mm-hmm. We've done stage plays for the last three years. We do workshops with the in public schools. We teach kids how to slam, and they win scholarship money when they win the competition. Mm-hmm. So I try to give back in that sense only because when I was a youth coming up, I didn't have that. I didn't have those platforms. So we have to create those platforms when we get up out of this collegiate status we're in at, this, at the moment. Mm-hmm. But besides that, I'm going to get into this next piece. Let's go. Um, it's about here. Coming from the East Coast to here was quite a transition. So, you know, a lot of culture, melting pot, New York, New Jersey, all that, to come to Ohio was pretty much none of that. <laughs> so, I dealt with a lot, a lot of crazy experiences. All right. I want to thank the BET, CNN, and MTV's perception of me. Because of them, now the world has this misconception of me. See, every day I'm supposed to sell drugs, rob, smoke, and bust the Glock 4. Disrespect women from Candy Paint Whip by sitting on 24. <clears throat> I'm supposed to hit legs, dick chicks, and flip bricks. I burn the sweets, your streets galore. Now, I understand why you clutch your purse and constantly follow me when I shop at your stores. I don't mind that when I pass your car, you want to lock your doors. Or when I step into a job and you really think I'm there to mop the floor. It's funny to me, because they don't understand the magnitude of the actions. State that I'm college educated, you should see the attitude and reactions. You would think they were in a museum looking at an exhibit. It makes me laugh because they prejudge blindly owing to my image. But it doesn't bother me. I never take it personal. That type of ignorance doesn't hurt me. It's only hurting you. Because of our braids, fitted caps, and Tim's that grace the stride of my motion, you may be blocking yourself from an angel due to your preconceived notion. But I understand, but I understand we live in a world where everything is based off of imagery. Never taking the time to see what truly lives in me. 
You know, the first impression is the last impression. And by me having hair, I could ask some stupid ass questions. <laughs> some ask if I'm mixed, I just just laugh at my look as if I would care. Shorties be like, is it real with an infamous one? Can I have your baby for that good hair? <laughs> some just assume I'm a white boy with a black complex. We're always scratching at the surface, but we're never digging for the content. So Ooh. is he black, white, mixed, or maybe he just light as skin? When we're asked about your hair, my people don't turn them away. Simply give them enlightenment. Let them know that hair was a 5,000 year old tradition expanding from America's Africa, Asia, Europe to the ancient Egyptians. To this day, African women use it as an opportunity to socialize and only married women will wear them in a Hopi tribe. And in some cultures, hair symbolizes strength and loyalty. Riches to get ready to Egypt for those of Egyptian royalty. Aztecs have braided colorful cloth and tied around their mane. While Norse Vikings wore blades in their braids while on battle terrain. And the Rastafarian religion, locks represent a new life with new dreams. While in Renaissance Europe, French braiding was invented to keep their hair clean. Along with those fierce Mohawk Indians covered in war paint. And when they cut Samson's off, her hair lost its strength. So whether you rockin' Swiss, Dutch, French, English, greater corn rolls, you rockin' lots, can't twist, mic rolls, or afro, or hair that don't reach your ponytail when it's sticking to the side, and then the next morning your hair's hanging to your thighs, <laughs> express who you are and live with the passion. My beautiful people with your hair twisted in the fashion. From the pyramids to the pavements, hair's been worn since I've descendants of a righteous kin. So when asked about your hair, don't turn them away. Simply give them enlightenment. You better tell them. Oh! He gonna do one more piece and I'm gonna follow up with a final piece on it. I met a public speaker in the building. We appreciate y'all ears. Thank you so much. Yes. Hey. Told you the power of man bun don't never <laughs> doubt the power of man bun when it comes to poetry. You feel me? So, um, you know, I was just thinking. Let me ask you a question. You know what? Would I do two, two love pieces? Mm. So we can. We all grow up. No, no, we're not gonna grow up. <laughs> um, but one of the things I appreciate about this open expression is it's the opportunity to tell people how you feel, your emotions. I always think that every person needs to take some time to meditate today. Take some time to think about you today. Think about your goals, your ambitions, where you see yourself in a few years. But well, we don't do that often. You know what I mean? So sometimes we need aids that help us focus that attention on paper. When you write something, you can you can focus your attention. You're writing so other people may hear your poetry, but it's, it's necessarily just for you, right? It's like you writing to teach yourself lessons. So what I encourage you to do when you leave here is make sure you take some time out of your day for you. Because you give your time to everybody else. Your professors, your job, your friends, your family everybody else but you necessarily don't get that time to yourself so make a resolve within yourself to take some time today whether it's to write something to rehearse a song or whatever take time for you and the older you get i mean i'm not that much older than y'all probably I'm, I'm not the oldest person in here i know for sure my buddy's older than me. but that's one of the things you learn it's a, it's a hard lesson to learn it's like you have to you you have to make that time for yourself you know what i mean just like you schedule everything else schedule time for you um, and that's what writing, how writing has helped me. Mm -hmm. And I hope that this program can continue and you guys can continue to do this every year because mm -hmm. this gives you a reason to focus your efforts to teach you how to live better, how to love better, how to laugh more. And if you can do those things, hell, you're doing all right, right? That's right. So um, let's see what, how we're going to end this. We're going to end it like with the first poem I did here. Okay, so if I forget the poem, it's technically not my fault because I haven't did it in a few years. No judgment. And if people watching on live, if I forget it, I mess up. We family, just remember that. Um, <laughs> the doctor told me to tell you that he can make you know. Just like he did to Johnny. See, Johnny used to hear voices, but luckily the doctor had a pill for that. Eight of them to be exact. Three, he prescribed for his illness, but the rest were for the extra side effects, one of which happens to include death, which probably explains why Johnny feels like he can't live life when he's on him, like taking each one of them. It was like shoving jaded swords of guys rejected that chainsaw the hated scriptures down his asthmatic throat, then washing it down with a little self-hate made from, made from homemade acid and Windex in an attempt to clear the glass of his so-called confused soul, all mm. in a pill. But Johnny, Johnny would rather die than be true to his imperfect self than to swallow. No one understands him. 
So they label him suicidal when they send him to an asylum simply because he would rather be loved for himself, not the drugged up version that everyone seems to want him to be. Like, see, Johnny, he used to write. Psychotic similes similar to Shakespearean beauties, his metaphors used to move hearts and transform souls. Johnny was a poet, a poet that God created his words for saviors. Therefore, they could walk on water and swim like only words God himself could have aquatically whispered to his soul. Poems so beautiful that teenage rainbows ducked off, for, ducked off in the crowded part of a crowded party when his rotors arrived and it was recited. Donnie used to tell me that it was the voices that helped him write it, that it was God himself percussing rhythmic hymns to him that his poetry it was like the holy thunder that God's, the, like God's commandments that holy thunder boomed on stone tablets of his mind, which he later read to congregated crowds off the top of mountains built from mic stands, mm -hmm. stools, and spotlights that it was poetry. This is the good part. I know I stumbled a little bit. This is the good part. <laughs> that was the poetry that made the corners of his mouth reach toward the North Star, leading the way for runaway smiles to escape and find a pool populated with perfected pronouns and punctuations and wait and those waters until children made from currents and inspiration could wash away the shackles that bound captive creative thoughts and smiles and frowns could be let go and he can be free from the sin of his slavery that he would sleep all day, not because he was depressed, because he stayed up all night leading other minds to escape. See, Johnny was much more than a patient that had voices. Nobody heard, doctor. He was a, po a poet that had a voice that everybody heard. But you had a filter. But Johnny, he never heard <coughs> voices saving from God's perfected intentions. Voices no longer motivate hands to dance on paper and lay it to tap to the jazz of his own drums and the smiles created from the beats of his heart and no longer snares at the cadence of Johnny was over the dose. <laughs> a combination of valium, lithium, and seer quill. Doctor, tell me, what good is it to no longer have voices to hear when the prescription is to no longer be able to feel anything? Doctor, when was the last time you was able to feel anything? Doctor, can you hide behind that oversized lab coat pretending you can evoke emotions like poets but does giving pills feel anything like having a crowd roar? Rewind the words you re from from the tough period in time and helps you get your life back in line and then having a ball, a small voice from inside whisper, well done. Come and see. That's how he finds you. I need this fight, bro. Behind that false facade that you pretended to be God, you have decided you have the right to give it and take it away and just to feel it. <coughs> told me to tell you he can make it up. <coughs> Little cells contain instead for the sub inside these cups. <laughs> okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring my man Jay Martinez up to the middle floor, man, and we're going to skip that out of my way. Cool? Yes. Cool. Cool. All right, clap it up. Woo! Let's go. Let's just go. So I'm going to let y'all decide on this one, social media or another social political? Hmm? Social media. Uh, social media. Social social political, media. yeah. Spiritual replenisher. So in essence, my flows into your soul every time that I administer. I'm not a pastor, a preacher, and I'm far from a minister. Low key, a lot of those positions, well, they be quite sinister. Mm. An educated brother. At any given time, I can act everything into a criminal. Not now, when all I've ever known was to only have the minimal. Government's hypocritical. Slavery used to be physical, nowadays more subliminal. 
we went from rags to digital, from working with our mm -hmm. thoughts to twerking with some thoughts, how typical. Mm -hmm. Our ancestors used to record the world stars, now we pull up our phones to record for world star, how pitiful. Mm -hmm. More tweeting, less speaking, more posting, less approaching, nothing is original. We'll do it for the vibe, but we'll never face books. Shit is getting critical. It seems like DM, Snapchat, text messages about the only communication that we listen to. And how the fuck you call them selfies when you post them just to see what other people think of you? And then you get mad, and then you get mad and want to comment every time somebody ridicule. Humble on social media, but your need for attention and validation is so visible. My brothers in the front of their cell phone when they got a face time. The bullshit Woo. is clinical. Why don't you just Skype me your church service, sign Quadra Heminu, because in this day and age, only tangible thing you can feel are the words that I give to you. The poetic, passionate breakdown, every single syllable, just so you can see the bullshit that we're living through. I mean, just look at how we live in life. You pay dollars to a cent on over usage for some gigabytes. And you ain't got to leave the crib. You can buy anything on Amazon as long as it's in stock. It used to be cool to think outside of it, but now we stay on the inbox. No longer do we mm. bleed from a gun in the night. Nowadays, it's cyberbullying and self-esteem is being determined by the number of likes. So we merge with this technology. We forget where the people wish this land grown. A change going to come is with Samsung. But Samsung mm. got us trapped in her galaxy, and it's a tragedy. Woo! I mean, I mean shit's getting really, I mean... Every, everything seems to be deemed by these megapixel screens. Only words of wisdom we receive from followers and memes, but nobody is following their dreams. Shit is getting really crazy. Just in the last four nights, I saw four fights between some quote unquote bad bitches as to which one of them was getting more likes. Balling on his statuses to escape the reality, living a poor life. And sure to be typing up some deep statuses, but she used the letter U to spell the word foresight. But I guess that's acceptable, because on her profile pic, her ass is horse like. The revolution will not be televised. The last poets couldn't have said it more right. Tell me, would you tag on your insecurities? Would you update all of your secrets? Would you tweet your true intentions? Would you take a selfie with any one of your demons? Woo! For all of you new age conspiracy theorists, don't talk to me about the Illuminati shit you saw on YouTube. And if you ain't picked up a book, don't tell me about the research you found on Google, the documentary you saw on Netflix or Hulu. Don't you know that five companies control 72% of the shit that you view? Come three on two, now! Three to two who happen to be Disney, Viacom, GE, but who knew? I'm sorry if this poem makes you uncomfortable because what I'm saying is too true, but if you blew, then maybe this poem applies to you too. But please, by all means, live your life and do you. Cause I never wrote this piece to make you feel like you're living in shame That was never my intentions and aim Just be careful of the time you invest Cause our attention is strained And I can't even front cause on the road I be living the same Cause as soon as I get done at this set at right set I'm straight straight to the crib and I'm hopping on my motherfucking video game <laughs>